The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezable soft host. Once more into the breach, dear friends, and uh, as uh, a lot of people asked for, they uh, really thought that they wanted action. Well, they've got action. We're off 48 points on the S&P cash at 1924 and change, uh, but uh, we will... Uh, Turn it down just a little bit on the base. Anyway, maybe a little more. We'll find out. But it uh, doesn't seem to have changed anything. Anyway, uh, we've got uh, a action-packed show for you. And that's just because this market is action-packed. I don't think it has anything to do with me today. 2.5 billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape as we start the show. And uh, that is about all we have to say about that. Just a not a lot going on out here. And before I make a, another mistake, I've got to turn my phone down. There we go. Anyway, um, a lot of stuff going on. Cross currents, of course, everybody's blaming the Chinese today. I will not stoop to that level because I think that's the easy answer. The hard answer is that Markets go up and markets go down. I think a lot of people were looking for an excuse to sell the market going into a long weekend. But uh, I think it's more of anything, just uh, a lot of people trying to run technical levels. 2.5 billion shares is probably a little light for getting down here. If you wanted to see these markets go much lower and you were bearish, you probably wouldn't want to see the market selling off into a long weekend with lighter volume than we had on the last way down. But it uh, doesn't mean that it won't keep going on. But my guess is this market is setting up for some fairly decent moves to the upside when we come back over the three-day weekend. That may be more to do with the Fed. I think uh, the Fed's tried to hold tough here. The market is uh, double-dog daring them to raise rates and uh, kind of keep a gun to their heads. But, uh, you know, we're off 50 points today, 1923. Eh. Give me a worst. Give me a worst. Anyway, I think this is uh, a little lighter than a lot of people thought, especially this morning. And I thought kind of, uh, I started playing this song just because uh, I thought it was all over the way that they talked about the markets. That's uh, They should have just played that on CNBC for an endless loop. Markets go up, markets go down. Um, I think anybody that says the market's going to the sky or going to hell in a handbasket probably is not making good decisions in the market. Uh, the idea is to take a look and see what it's telling you at the time and probably make a little bit more and less uh, energetic projection about what's going on. A lot of people are going to say this is the end of the world as we know it. I do not think it is. We needed to go down to about 1990. We blew through it much farther and faster than anybody thought was possible, mostly because we had very few, if any, shorts. Uh, the bear markets tend to crack fairly strongly when there aren't a lot of shorts. The downside to sh cracking today is that there aren't going to be a lot of people down here with stops. They've already gotten wiped out last week. They also did the Rule 48 again for the uh, opening this morning and couldn't find a lot of people putting in market orders to run through although I'm sure there were a few. But, uh, you know, it is a market that will go up and go down. Right now, uh, I've got long positions. I did not 
by the indexes. I bought stocks that I thought probably had a better chance of giving me a profit. And uh, frankly, uh, they're no different than the last two days for the most part. And uh, we'll see what happens. But I, my guess is that if I can weather uh, a, a immensely tiny bit of heat between now and when we come back, the was it the sixth or the seventh? Da, 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 da. The eighth. We come back the eighth because I'm gone after tomorrow's show. Going to be doing a little bit of boating and sailing. I'll be back on the eighth for my show then. I'll uh, still be doing the newsletter if uh, you're one of my subscribers, so that will not change. I've got a pack of batteries for my phone so I can see and watch what's going on. But my guess is this is the last day of interesting action in this market. We're probably going to pull up a little bit tomorrow and uh, be in a trading range, I suspect, from 1930 to about 1970, maybe 1975. But um, if you get a lot of people short now and the volume really starts sinking up on them, we can have one of these markets that just goes up 10 or 15 points each day until Friday's close, even with all the bad news. In fact, I think the market actually kind of has handled the market or handled the bad news from China a little bit better than it has in the past. But we'll see how this market closes out here today. As we always like to say, the day ain't over yet. Day ain't over yet. Anyway, as we get on and start the show. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Today in 1929, the total market capitalization of all stocks listed on the New York Stock Exchange reaches its zenith, $82.11 billion. The value of all securities, including U.S. foreign stocks and government bonds, uh, also in totality, peaked at $136 billion that day. The uh, biggest sector by far is the utility industry. And, of course, they made a giant bubble out of that, telling people that the utilities would uh, have no end to grow. They would be like uh, Jack's beans. They would grow to the sky. Uh, with uh, almost $15 billion of value followed by railroads, petroleum, chemicals, and automobiles. Uh, the biggest section of all of that was REITs. By July 1st, 1932, the market value of all listed stocks will shrivel. We can call it shrinkage. It shriveled to a mere $12.7 billion and 84.5% loss in the next coming three years. Do I think anything like this is happening? No. Do I think that we could see a 20% haircut? I think the answer is yes. Uh, will we have... Uh, times to be both long and short? I think the answer to that is yes, too. Right now, I suspect that we still have the ability to probably squeeze a lot of shorts coming back, and that will probably happen when the Fed decides to bail on their idea of raising rates. I don't know what's going to happen between now and then, but they'll find some excuse. I think they enjoy jawboning the market down a little bit in the moment without actually doing anything. But um, the market probably getting very close to the point of thinking the Fed is nothing more than the boy who cried wolf. What a great story. I don't think, uh, I wonder if parents read their kids the, those, uh, uh, what is it? I want to say Abel's, but it's not. Abel's uh, fables, something. I remember my mom my grandmother reading me all those Aesop's fables. That's what it was. What a great set of books and lessons to learn as a kid. I wonder if they do anything or if it's a miserable uh, glory of the, the explorer now. Yeah, Aesop's fables. What great, great learning stuff. Now they get all these horrible things I see on TV. I don't think a Teletubby is probably anywhere close to Aesop's fables. A lot of good ones. Boy, Cried Wolf was in that, by the way. Of course, uh, Einhorn, so a lot of these other big kings of the street had continued to leverage all the way up. So when the markets come back, they've come back down. We continue to see a, very, well, at least the numbers from Einhorn. And since uh, he likes to say, if you get in his way, you will be Einhorned, 
I'm saying that uh, as the market pulled back, he has been einhorned. He einhorned himself. Anyway, uh, if you look at the numbers from yesterday's close, uh, he was down about 7% on Apple overall for his positions. Console Energy was off almost 8%. General Motors down 7%. Gold, he was actually up 3.6%. The one bright spot. Micron Energy, of course, he was pushing this at 30 bucks a share quite vividly. So my guess is he's, this 38 million shares is a whole lot less than he used to have. But... Uh, off 11% on that. And Sun Edison uh, off a whopping 55% in his position. So even big men of the street uh, have issues. And as uh, William Buffett likes to say, and I think it came from a saying back in 1910, uh, even, uh, or I said, uh, when the tide goes out, you can see who's swimming without a bathing suit. And, uh, these guys tend to get a lot of respect when the market's going up, tend to get a lot of pain on the way down. Anyway, going to get into uh, stocks. You can certainly give me a call at 877-927-6648, and we'll be glad to take your phone call. You can also email me at path at tfnn.com, and uh, we can take a look and see what's going on there. Uh, okay. Anyway, um, First one I want to look at is see how some of these technology stocks have uh, INTC, he said. I wanted to see how Intel had really done. Because a lot of these stocks, when I was looking at them earlier in the day, just really didn't do a lot. Now, there was a lot of action in the indexes. And it looks to me like there's a lot of action of people pushing around the greater market with the indexes, but a great deal of these stocks are coming back at least so far today on lighter volume. Intel was one that I wanted to see, you know, just how bad things really were out here in tech land. But uh, off right now, you know, it had 42 million shares to the upside yesterday, just 25.6 million shares to the downside today. Does not sound to me like a stock that is getting thrown out with the bathwater. Microsoft, a um, little bit worse out here. This thing probably wants to test that $40 level. Uh, down a little bit, but again, if you were thinking and you were very bearish, you would have liked to have seen the volume really increase today. Nice pop down, and you've got about 20, a little over 27 million shares. That goes back into the low of just a few days ago on the 24th with 88 million shares. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Mr. Bear on Microsoft. Uh, other uh, stocks of interest out here. Uh, let's take a look at Micron. Again, this is more of a commodity business, and I don't think anything changes it. Um, we talked about what they're going to be doing next year, but again, that's next year. Everybody's looking at what happens tomorrow in the stock market right now because things moving fairly fast. But another one down a little bit today, but not a lot of volume either on it. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Tiger T. TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal
crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Well, Ford came out with uh, numbers and uh, kind of a surprise out there. I didn't get to see the rest of the industry, but uh, pretty good numbers. They were expecting a rise of 2.5%, uh, I think on car sales ended up with about 5%, and uh, it's kind of hanging in here today. Other stocks of interest, and of course, a lot of times on a day like this, it's not the stocks that get thrown out with the bath water, but the ones that hold up that tell you the most. VMware, which we've talked about for a long time, uh, discussion about whether EMC is going to sell their part, a lot of other things, cross currents going on, but uh, is up on a little bit of volume, this thing's been kind of going sideways for about five days. Ninety, uh, excuse me, seventy-three dollars sixty-five cents is the July 29th low, five point one million shares. Uh, kind of into that candle with three point six million shares up a little today on one point five. So not a big signal, but it's not going down. Other stocks that are kind of going sideways. Uh, we had, of course, a huge win on BIIB, and. Uh, and for a day that we're off as hard as we are, there's a lot of these indexes that uh, or ETFs that don't seem to be moving much. This one's actually a little higher than it's open at the present time. Um, could this be making an ABC one more down? Uh, boy, I tell you what, uh, I'm more likely to say that a retest of the August 24th is going to be some kind of at least 
short term low at 265. That had uh, 5.8 million shares. Again, a lot of those, the question is if they're ever going to get down into those kind of big volumes. But again, this one's kind of a neat one, especially if you just look at the last uh, few days out here of low volume. Did come back up, had a nice recovery. The last three days, the volume has just been very uh, tepid coming off those highs. And again, into the summer, uh, not like you could see too much of that. A lot of people were all over FCX the previous few days. It is and came back rather violently today, almost 8%. It was on a downgrade, but even this one uh, on the downside doesn't have any juice. And if you were going to throw a baby out with a bathwater, I don't know if there's a better one than FCX out here, but certainly down on, what, 29 million shares compared to it going up just a few days ago up on 108 million shares. And so it's getting back into that candle. You know, I wouldn't buy it unless it went and tested the low, but I can't tell you that this thing looks horrible. Uh, Netflix is off today in FLX, in FLX. A couple things going on with Netflix. One, Apple is talking about getting into content. I've never thought that the business model of Netflix was that great with them just buying other people's content. So they got into the content business. We talked yesterday about how problematic their books are in the 10Q that they sneaked in on Friday down on. And this is one that is picking up a little bit of volume uh, in to today and actually increased the volume from yesterday. Uh, 17 million shares, 25 million shares today. Now, you're up against a couple of down days that had some decent volume, 37 million shares on the 25th of uh, August. And, you know, do you go back to $85.50? It's hard for me to see this thing falling apart just because so many people think that they know uh, this stock as retail traders and they're liable to think that any dip on this should be bought. I think it's going to be probably, you know, it's going to be probably take some time where people really start figuring out that they have options. I have both Netflix and Amazon Prime, and I have the Fire Stick, so I can watch either one of them. But uh, very interesting to see uh, exactly Netflix's ball game of not making money, very much like Amazon's business of not making money. But somehow I have a feeling that Amazon cannot make money a lot longer than Netflix cannot make money. And that would make me think that Netflix is the weaker horse of these two. But then you have um, people, you know, a lot of uh, other companies like HBO really getting into streaming on their own side. Uh, and the question is, do you really need an aggregator as much as you need somebody like Netflix if you can do it all of your own and do it by your own? A little different. Of course, earnings out here, we talked about this last week. Dollar, not a lot of these. Dollar Tree uh, getting smacked around back down to its previous lows, but finding at least temporarily some support. It's got a ton of volume down here to the August 24th low. It came in with 4.2 million shares, and uh, we're back right into it. Now, we have busted it by a couple of pennies. But a lot of volume, 8.8 .8 million shares. You think on a horrible day like this, it would have just blown through the lows. DLTR. Anyway, we will be back in a minute. You can always give me a call, 877-927-6648. Email me at pathtfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN 
and you'll find the path of least resistance under trading newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. The old ways are the best, best ways. That's what they say. Anyway, Cabela's out also in one of these stocks, not lower today on a fairly ugly uh, at least index day. And uh, they're back, uh, what to say, $500 million share repurchase program. I don't think we have one around anywhere here, do we, in Tampa? Everybody who talks about them, I know they buy a lot of stuff from them. Uh, this is back up to the resistance level, so I don't know if it did them a whole lot of good. Um, you've got a consolidation range that started on the 27th of, what was it, uh, July and basically went all the way through the 20th of August before everything fell apart. But it's uh, right back up to that level. The question is whether someone was distributing and or accumulating this stock. I would suspect that today that they are buying back shares and it didn't go a lot higher. And it probably means that there were some people on the sell side on this. Um, I imagine they do a lot more business in the summer than they do in the winter. But uh, I'm going to watch it over the next few days, see how it actually responds to all this supposed buying ALKS. Uh, another one up a little bit today, or it was up a little bit. Eh, I guess it is up compared to yesterday. Uh, volume has picked up on this one, Alchemies, which is the uh, 
biotech? Um, not a lot. I mean, this is kind of an inside day compared to yesterday, other than the volume, which is interesting. Um, I guess you can make a case that this is an ABC down in this. The volume on this last leg up, though, was decent, August 24th. When you made your low out here, which is, you know, you'd probably want this thing to at least come back and test 5301, which is a pretty decent range. It's about 10 bucks off of yesterday's high. But, um, eh, you know, the volume was not that bad. Uh, volume today kind of weird in that it's not up or down. But uh, another one that I'll be watching here uh, on an inside day. Ones that have been smacked around a bit. Hey. is uh, Science Applications International, S-A-I-C. Uh, volatile little puppy out here, down and with big volume. Your next low out here is 50, or excuse me, $41.03, August 24th. Yeah, 480,000 shares. You got 370,000 already. I would suspect that the things are not going well. Earnings of 66 cents per share, including non-recurring items. A penny better than the uh, estimates, but uh, not that good. Revenues rose 15%, but uh, they didn't like what they heard. Uh, another one in the with the dunce hat on today is GoPro. It was off uh, fairly significantly. Let's take a look at this as soon as it comes up. Nice little gap down in GoPro. It looks like it's going after its $37.13 low for March 10th. Uh, volume has picked on this one out here. And again, this has never been one that I thought much of. Uh, the idea, every time someone says that something's different, it usually isn't. CMG was the restaurant that everybody thought that uh, they wanted to be like. Oh, i got to look at them today. Um, but, um, of course, they started selling El Poco Loco as the next CMG. It's been far from it. But anytime someone tells me something that is vastly different and or they're going to have to change their business model when they come to, to uh, after they come through the IPO, I'm always extremely dubious. GoPro was uh, kind of like Apple in the fact that they had very high margin product. But it was hardware for the most part. It wasn't a lot of software. There was a lot of noise when the IPO came out about them becoming a big content producer and kind of a YouTube-like thing. I haven't really seen a lot of noise or anything out. Uh, to me, it looked like much more like a fad than a life change where everybody's going to be jumping out of uh, airplanes with uh, parachutes. Hopefully, they're jumping out with parachutes on. Um, but uh, certainly it looks like this thing with the volume today is more than willing and set up for the test of $37.13. The problem has been that this thing has been 50% short almost since it was 85 or 90 bucks. And uh, there's never been any shorts or any shares to short that I could ever find, which means that uh, most of the big guys already know the story on this one already. Oh, I... I Oh, and the options were horribly priced, too. Every indication that the thing was going lower, um, but people kept buying it. I think uh, Kramer had a lot to do with uh, pushing that uh, stock. Bring me the head of the false prophet, Jim Kramer. Anyway, I'll never get tired of playing that. Did I have that for the wrong one? Hang on a second. Maybe I've got the wrong ticker symbol. QII, was that it? To OII. Maybe that's why. There we go. Um, they're off 7% today. This is Oceaneering and International. If I'm not mistaken, this is a company that spends most of its time drilling offshore. And, of course, energy coming back uh, today didn't help them at all. Uh, let's see, yeah, da, da, da. engineering services products, primarily or, uh, offshore oil and gas industry worldwide, down, and this one does have significant volume. Let's uh, take a look at crude real quick. Yeah, it's off $3.70 at $45.50, so taking the brunt of the pullback today. 
Uh, what else do we have out here? Uh, okay. Well, we're 1928 on the S&P cash, which is off of 43 bucks. That uh, 1930 level kind of has been acting like that is truly the line of support in the S&P and probably going to be a, a, important to the close. Some of the other stocks I wanted to look at here before the end of the day. Uh, Akamai. Uh, some of these stocks had some fairly big rips off the bottom. Wanted to see if they were bringing back volume on the way back down. So far today, uh, 1.4 million shares compared to 1.8 yesterday and 2.3 back at the high at $71.78. I'm not seeing a lot in that so far. Uh, let's take a look at Best Buy because it ripped higher. See how it's handling the pullback out here today. Um, I mean, this one basically ripped the lips off of everybody that was short in this thing. It's down today again, 3.3 million shares. It was up on 7.2 million shares yesterday, 4.7 million the day before, 9.5 million shares the day before. I don't think I'd be short this. It looks like if they got back down about 31 bucks, maybe this wouldn't be a setup for fall instead of a short candidate. Let's see what else I had on my list out here that I wanted to look at. Calm, anything but. Again, Calmain Foods. This thing's been bouncing around fairly significantly. Uh, do we have volume on this one on the downside today? Uh, 450,000 shares so far compared to a million shares on the upside yesterday when this thing gapped. So probably nothing in that one to write home about. Let's take a look at some other stocks that I'm watching and uh, taking an eye on. Got an uh, email about UNG. So let's take a quick look. You know, it certainly looks good out here that it's basing out. I kind of just like that the volume a few days ago was about the same as the volume that we had June 4th at uh, 8.9 million shares. Volume was a little higher. Uh, volume was a little higher than we saw back here at $12.28 from April 27th. And that's probably what I would have to wait for to buy UNG. And that is that test of $12.28, that April 27th low. And uh, just as horrible as everything has been out here uh, in the markets, uh, it's not that much to wait for. Twelve dollars and twenty-eight cents. Let's see what else do we have out here that I wanted to look at. We talked about IBB yesterday, and how I thought that it probably done just about everything that you were looking for uh, in a retracement, and that uh, this actually did the almost. What was it? The three fifty-six twenty-four would have been the uh, six one eight retracement. Got within two bucks of that. Uh, for a high yesterday, and it's kind of pretty much come down. So if you're looking on the opposite side, 327 would be the 382, and 319.33 would be a 50% retracement of that. We are down on the IBB today. Is volume picking up? Well, what did we have yesterday? 1.8 million shares today, 1.6 million shares. So we're probably going to get a little bit more volume than we had yesterday but uh, when we look at the up days out here off uh, a week ago monday's uh, action that was up on 4.8 4.9 million shares even the next day 2.8 million shares and then uh, 2.7 million shares so uh, not really seeing a lot of volume and acceleration in ibb out here today uh, what else is on mine nflx did we I think we talked about it in FLX. Yeah. Boy, talk about a gappy little sucker out here. Yeah, volume picking up a little. What else did we have out here? Oh, got a uh, email about Tesla, T S L A, for James. Let's see what he has to say. I mean, this thing, talk about a stock that came right back up to the 618 and is turned down today. Um, for me, what was that, uh, 251.64, uh, barely pierced that uh, two, 
yesterday with 254.95 and then pretty much turned around that here. I think you can make a case that this one would be in an ABC down if it didn't have all this energy off this low from 195, the August 24th low. Um, it looks to me like you got, what, uh, nine and a half million shares. I mean, I'm fairly bearish on this thing, but to me, it doesn't look all that horrible. Today, the volume, eh, well, match yesterday's 3.4 million shares to 4.7. Probably get a little bit more volume on this. I'm not tremendously bearish on this, but uh, I mean, bullish on it. But 50% uh, retracement would take you to 224.98 on it. So maybe there's a little bit more to be had out here to the downside. Uh, to, 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 what else do we have? Let's see a few other stocks. Wanted to look and see how some of these 3D stocks that have been burrowing in to the lows have been doing. And uh, not a lot of movement in these things lately. Starting to at least interesting or interest me. You did pierce the previous low by significantly lighter volume. I suspect that with all the damage that's been done in these 3D stocks, that they're probably at least going to get back down into this um, $11.66 low of August 6th and maybe down as far as the $11 low of August 24th. Just a horrible market. Uh, you don't pick up the stocks that have lost 90% or 80% of their value in the last year and find these things taking right off. But uh, we get two or three months of a light volume down here on this $11. We may have done enough consolidation and damage repair to get these things back off of the bottom. But uh, let's take a look at SSYS. SSYS. FICA type. Another one out here. Uh, let's get rid of that so we can see a little bit better. There we go. Uh, no volume. Well, let me put it this way. Lighter volume on today's downside. 700,000 shares so far. We did 800,000 shares on the way up. The issue was not all that bad off the lows. Um, I wouldn't have bought it. The energies each day, the volume has been kind of tipping off a little bit. But it is eh, what it is, lighter of volume compared to at least the high volume down day or up day from the 24th of August. And uh, like I said, almost all these stocks have all had huge um, off the top movements. This one was 130 bucks not that long ago. Uh, so if you are looking to buy and do any bottom fishing uh, when all this stuff does settle out, you'd probably want to take a look at these, but you're going to need probably a month or two months or three months of consolidation back down around these levels and don't break any lower and restart the clock all over on that consolidation. But uh, I don't know, 25, mid 25s to mid 27s, looks to me like this thing could uh, be in here, consolidate for a while and put everything back together. We're at 1224.22 on the S&P cash, 2.8 billion shares volume is significantly lower than the last times we were down here and significantly lower than the volume up when we started ripping higher. Again, I suspect that we are in a little lower trading range than we had the previous few days of that 1970 to 1990. I suspect that maybe we would be in this 1930 to 1970 level now if uh, they can get any kind of action before the end of the day out here. Uh, 19, 23 on the S&P cash, 2.8 billion shares. On any regular day, that would be huge. Today, a little wimpy. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed 
Swift has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back. Anyway, we were looking at 3D stocks and... Uh, eh. How interesting are they today? Uh, let me get some other things fixed up here. Got a few things to move around the screen. What else do we have going on here? Um, let's see if there was anything else in my list of stuff to take a look at. Uh, that's pretty much it. So we'll look at a few things that I haven't had a chance to look at lately. I wanted to look at uh, Beave Airspace. This one had been kind of, you know, as a proxy. Oop, actually, come on, Beave. There we go. Um, looked kind of interesting me, uh, to me because it been make it made such a huge low on that Monday, um, down to forty five dollars and forty three cents on just two point nine million shares against the six million share low back on July twenty third. And of course, they make a lot of parts and airplanes and. And we can go look at uh, Boeing to see 
if anything else happens. It seems to trade in line with Boeing. See how they did. Well, volume, at least to this point, day's not over yet. But a um, little gap down. 3.4 million shares today. Had 4.2 million shares yesterday. So not running away with this. Of course, the energy on this, where this thing actually popped up last week, was as high as uh, 9.4 million shares on the 24th. On the 25th, it was 7.1 million shares. So I'm not going to say we've got uh, volume really picking up on this when uh, we're, what, 3 o'clock in the afternoon doing 3.4 million shares. And again, it seems like a lot of the volume tends to be in these indexes and uh, maybe the high-frequency traders moving things, maybe uh, not as much volume in the individual stocks as we looked at them. I look at them. Uh, anyway, we looked at that. Uh, I want to look at Facebook real quick and see how these things are moving. Eh, down a lighter volume out here. Uh, can you really make anything of that other than uh, other than the entire market? Cut kind of the entire market looks, which is a little lighter volume over the last five days as things have calmed down. Of course, today you expect a lot of these stocks, the volume to pick up. Facebook, uh, what, uh, 26.7 million shares as we speak today, as it went back up just uh, a few days ago on the 26th of August, it had 45.1 million shares, and that's what that candle is into today. So we're going to be very light compared to that candle and the day before it, where it had 52 million shares on the 25th. So if we are coming back, we are coming back at least on a handful of these on a lighter volume. And uh, I can imagine that uh, that's not going to change anything. Um, I haven't looked at Amazon. I wanted to get to that yet today. Um, you know, um, is are we talking about massive amounts of volume? No. This one, kind of the same thing. And this thing popped up on the 26th and had that nice blue candle. Uh, it did it with uh, almost 6.4 million shares. We're down on 2.6 million shares today and back into that candle. The day before on the 25th of August, 5. Point, well, let's call it 5.7 million shares. So a lot of volume on the way back up, lighter volume at least so far on the way down. Uh, it's Wednesday the day that we're going to probably see volume fall out and really see trading really start again next Tuesday after the three-day weekend. I would suspect this may be the last big hurrah for a volume. And uh, eh, what are we at here, 1922? So we'll see how this closes the day. I would say 1930 and above for a close would be kind of interesting out here and would suggest the higher trading range. Below that, maybe the uh, bulls have another day to push this thing down, so we'll watch that. 2.88 billion shares as we go through to the end of the day. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.